Well, as expected, as the season's gone on, we've slowly drifted down the league and it's going to take something absolutely spectacular from here until the end of the season if we're going to finish in the playoffs. Not that we're aiming for the playoffs. I'm just making conversation. Hello and welcome to part 88 of It's Coming Home. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have two championship games for you. One at home against Birmingham and the other away against Crystal Palace. Since you were last with me, um, <laughs> it's like we knew it was coming. We've had one win in, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One win in 11 games in the championship. To be fair to us, as a newly promoted team, only four defeats in 11 as well. Although two of those defeats have been in the last two games and we got absolutely battered. We were on a little three-game un- unbeaten. And in fact, February, one defeat in February in a six-match month. Not a disaster at all, but one, just, yeah, just, just the one win in 11 games. We're still not completely out of touch with the playoff picture. We're absolutely completely safe, 57 points. With, what, nine games to go, we are as safe as safe can be. The gap is enormous. The gap is also starting to look pretty enormous above us, though. Six points between us and sixth place Cardiff. Watford are in between us and them as well. And, uh, yeah, mid-table. Mid-table is fine for this season, but it was fun dreaming for a little while. But let's let's try and win some games. If You know, if we win three or four games in a row, which we're very unlikely to do, but if we win three or four games in a row, we might find ourselves back in the mix and having an interesting run into the end of the season. But I expect we'll probably finish about 12th, maybe win once or twice more between now and the end of the season and just sit here hoping for a big bunch of cash to come in in the summer. Now we're in the championship. If it doesn't, yeah, next season will be a challenge. I think this is how it happened with Nuneaton. I, I need to go back and rewatch the videos, but I've got a feeling we went up to the championship, survived, got relegated the next season then came back up as champions, then went up into the Premier League. So we're kind of following that model at the moment where we've started really well and now we're struggling and we need to find a way to... I think we probably do need to switch the tactic up, but I just can't bring myself to do it because it's worked so well so far this season. We're kind of going to be forced to in the summer because presumably we won't be getting Matondo back on loan again for a third season in a row because Stoke, who he's on loan from, and the same goes for Moss really, uh, but Stoke are down in 12th place and Matondo's one of the top scorers in the division. He's now in England under 21 international. Why wouldn't Stoke play him themselves next season? So I think we're probably going to have to adjust to our one striker system again next year. And it probably isn't the worst idea. But let's enjoy Matondo while we've still got him. You never know. Certainly while it's still mathematically possible for a playoff push, we've got to keep playing our strongest team. Once we are absolutely certain we're looking at mid-table, then we can start to experiment a little bit. Probably pull out the 4-3-3 again and see how Anthony Harris gets on on his own up front at this level. Because that's probably what he's going to be doing next season. So for today, we've got Humphreys in goal, a back four of Wehmuth, Rogers, Wright and Gregson, with Harrison behind Fernandes and Sawinski in midfield and Moss behind Matondo and Harris up front. Let's get into the game. Let's let's win 8-0. I mean, Birmingham are down in a relegation battle. I know we've had a ropey run of form, but those teams we've been losing to have been the teams who are all pushing for promotion. It's been a little while since we've played a team down in a relegation battle, although looking at that Birmingham are 8th on form, we're 17th. So actually our league, te- our league positions could effectively be reversed based on current form. Let's assertively say it's time to start improving. We need to, we need to start getting some form. We're at home. Presumably there's going to be a lot of fans in here again. We've, we're, obviously, we're definitely going to be setting a new record high average attendance this season. We fill the place most weeks, although we usually, there's usually more away fans than home fans. But that's not the point. We we need to get back to winning ways. And today feels like a jolly good day to do it. It's Wearmouth with the throw. Fernandez can't keep hold of the ball though. And oh but look at that. He wins it back because he's he's a proper homegrown hero. Moss plays it out to Gregson, who's got loads of space on this right hand side, but still somehow doesn't manage to get a cross in. Swinski finds Moss and there's Fernandez and it's just wide. Look at all those blue shirts behind the goal at that end that's clearly the end the Birmingham fans are hanging out in unless everyone's going to tell me oh Kev you know you're awake it's blue when I've been thinking it was pink all this time because I'm it's it's still a green kit 
no matter how many times you'll tell me it's a black kit, it's still a green kit. I won't, I won't ever acknowledge it's black. It is a green kit. But every time I mention it, I get comments telling me it's black. I don't see, I mean, I don't, I don't know how anyone can see it as black. I don't understand. And if you're saying the one in the match engine is green, but the actual shirt itself is black, I use the exact same color code from Photoshop for both. They are the same green. Rant about the shirt color from the colorblind man over. It's nil nil at half time. Let's, I, I, should we do an aggressive team talk? No, that seems a little bit too over the top. Let's carry on being assertive. Um, we're not doing badly at all. If everyone, mm, That doesn't seem like an assertive thing to say. The way they get, no. Yeah, just, I mean, assertively say something that seems more calm and conversational. But apparently, it got the job done. It's motivated a whole bunch of them. What a game, what a dross-filled game this must be to watch. Imagine paying good money to get into the ground today to watch a game that's an hour in and only had 10 shots between the two teams, only three of them on target and no goals. I'd be going home. Right, Fernandez out to Harrison, who surely can get across him, but no, plays it back to right. Right now, finds Fernandez. Fernandez has looked lively, forces a save out of the Birmingham keeper, and Nick Moss is there to tuck away the rebound. It looks like it's been given. I think he's onside. I don't know why there's all these grey shirts. Have we, have we released a new grey fourth choice shirt? Or have Sports Interactive started mixing other colour shirts into the normal sea of everybody wearing a replica shirt that we normally get? So it's now replica shirts and grey shirts that we've got behind the goal. Either way, it's 1-0 to home. And doesn't that put the cat among the pigeons again? Because look what's going on above us. Was this a game in hand or are those two both losing? Because as it stands, we're only three points outside the playoffs again. And all of a sudden, <laughs> all of a sudden it's game on, boys and girls. What is with all the grey? Are they like they look like they're wearing grey ponchos? Were they expecting rain today? It's 2 0 and it's Moss again, his second of the game. Let's not worry about the poncho situation. In fact, look at the attendances. We're not full. There's four thousand of a five and a half thousand capacity here. But only just over a thousand of them are Birmingham fans. We've got over three thousand home fans in the Ceranic New Who Stadium. We're actually building a bit of a fan base, even if we do end up stagnating in this league for a few years we're actually building a fan base it's just a shame the ground is already expanded to maximum capacity and when we get into the premier league when i have to go and ground share with someone because i'm reliably informed there's a hard-coded 20-year cooling off period on a new ground so you can't get a second new ground within 20 years of getting the first one we got the first new ground was it six or eight seasons ago either way realistically we're not going to get a second new ground before the save ends. So we're going to be ending the save, ground sharing with someone else. And there are a couple of people now who have downloaded the home database, which is still available on the home Twitter. It's the pinned tweet. I get asked all the time. It's the pinned tweet on the home Twitter. Is the is the home database. Um, I'm bringing on, another, bringing on another striker. Andrew can play alongside Powell. Uh, but a couple of people have now said that when they got to the Premier League, they had to ground share with Milton Keynes, which... Is just about the worst case scenario for me. So I'm hoping that that's not hard coded. But I guess looking at where home is, I mean, I would argue Leicester might be a little nearer. I'd need to get a map out. And what kind of loser would go on Google Maps in the middle of a football manager video, eh? Nerds. But I think Leicester's a little nearer than Milton Keynes to where home is. It's cert Leicester's certainly nearer to my house than Milton Keynes, but then home is like 20 miles further south than where I live. So there's every chance that's 20 miles nearer to Milton Keynes, but not much nearer to Leicester, which I guess is actually what's happening. We'll figure it out, but like I say, not going to do it in the middle of a video because only a nerd would do that. Um, we're defending rather desperately here, and I know people are probably saying, Kev, don't worry about maps for now. Focus on the game. Maybe maybe sling another defender on. Well, I've made all my changes. If you're one of the people who just listens to the videos rather than watching, which is a surprising number of people who do, I have made all my substitutions. I just didn't mention them. Um, but it looks like we are going to wrap up a 2-0 win. A pretty comfortable 2-0 win, actually, which remarkably does leave us... Two, uh, three points behind Cardiff, back up in seventh place. I need to check what's been going on with other results, or were we playing a game in hand? I didn't really look into it in too much detail before the game, but they do need, they get a little bit of post-match passion. 
and we need to work out what's just gone on. And because if they're if the teams around us are starting to lose now, perhaps they're going to have their rubbish form period. I mean, that's a that's a sentence right there. So Cardiff lost to Forest, and Watford lost to Preston. So actually, they did both. Forest are hovering around as well, so we need to keep an eye on them. But as it stands, eight games to go. We're only three points outside the playoffs with a better goal difference than the two teams above us. This is why we can't start experimenting with systems and dropping Matondo yet. And we've just had a marvellous piece of news come through as well. We now are officially, mathematically, guaranteed to have avoided relegation. And we had to pay 15 grand for the pleasure, which isn't the best situation for our finances. But the finances aren't looking as bad as they have in the past. <laughs> it says more about the past than the present, to be fair. But still. Just one change for the Palace game. Wearmouth is suspended. So Palliot comes in at left back. Um, we are facing a Crystal Palace team who are apparently in woeful form, according to the pre-match form thing. But they have just appointed Ryan Giggs as their new manager. So... We could be in for a uh, new manager bump. Somehow, after winning our last game, we've gone from 17th to 18th on the form standings. Um, but that team talk seemed to work last time. So let's try that. Oh, that didn't work at all. Didn't work at all. Um, so, where are Palace? Palace are in free fall. They're all the way down there. But, like I say, new manager. So, And we're away from home. So I guess this is a game that you would probably expect us to... Maybe not win, possibly even lose. But, you know, I I feel like we might be... We, we had one good game. We're turning it around. We're going to get back up into the playoffs. That that would be... I mean, imagine. It's it's utterly impossible to even imagine. I can't, so I assume we're going to lose and then I don't have to think about it anymore. It's going to be a stressful couple of hours playing those last few games if... Um, if we do manage to win this game and really put ourselves back into the mix. And I could do without the stress, because if we get to the playoffs, we're not going to win them anyway. Ah, there you go. I've talked myself out of it again. Sawinski comes across to cover and straight back up the other end for a different highlight. Paliuk with the corner. It's hit too long, but Matondo is chasing and does get there and plays it into Fernandez. Fernandez loses the ball, though, in midfield, and we've got a lot of players out of position here. But luckily, Palace play it all the way back to their keeper. I mean, that just seemed silly, uh, but... We're now attacking back at them again. It's with Swinski. Matondo plays it out to Gregson. It was a lovely pass from Matondo, who finds... It wasn't Matondo. Gregson found Harris, but Harris was always stretching and couldn't quite get any direction onto his header. It just sort of looped up into the arms of the keeper. And now Palace on the break, and they score. That was a, one of those long end-to-end -end highlights that you know he's ending with a goal, and you just hope it's going to go your way. It, it, it didn't. They scored. Very, very upset him. And what do you know? Home have been caught out with a ball over the top. That, that doesn't sound right. Oh, let's have some passion. As, in a, as a response to a ball over the top, we're going to passionately try and stop it from happening again, whilst also trying to score a goal of our own. And Harrison intercepts in midfield, finds Fernandez, Moss back to Fernandez, now Sawinski. That's all four of our midfield touch the ball within about three seconds of each other. And Matondo heads just over following the cross from Gregson. What a contrast. First match, I'm just chatting about nonsense. This one, you're getting proper commentary, but we're losing. Perhaps I need to go back. What was I talking about in the first match? We had an international break, so I don't remember what I was saying because it was 20 minutes ago for me. Um, I don't know. I could tell you about my broken heater, but I think I already told you about that yesterday. Maybe that was an on-lead to legend video. Harris is in! I don't understand what's just happened there, but I started talking about something nonsensical and we grab an equaliser. Is football manager allergic to commentary? We might have discovered something groundbreaking and new here. I mean, it is just a hopeful lump forward from Harrison. And their keeper needs to have a word with himself. And Anthony Harris, with his 18th goal of the season, makes it 1-1. And hopefully, Palace heads are going to drop now. They've got their new manager in, but they still have clearly very incompetent habits. That was just really poor, but then they respond immediately with another goal. So, yeah, I started talking about the match again. That's where I'm going wrong. What else have I got that I can talk about? Um, I've got I've got Captain Marvel drinks toppers that I paid five pound for five pound fifty for each 
drink at the cinema just to get a drinks topper. And now it just sits on my desk. That was 11 quid well spent. And the man shamed me when I was buying them. Right. Let's let's owe them after our last match. I can't think of anything else to say that's not football manager related. Which I guess is a good thing, as that's what you're watching for. But I'd quite frankly, if you all want to stop watching now for five minutes while I chat about something nonsensical and then we win the match because I'm doing it, I think I'd rather take the win than the views in this circumstance as we're on the cusp of a playoff push because it looks like Cardiff and Watford are stumbling again. Because, but I mean, what is going on with those two? If we were to if we were to somehow get back into this game and go ahead, we'd be up their level on points with Cardiff. Would I don't know how maths works. We're showing some passion again. We've had more possession. We just here we go. Matondo this time ball over the top and Matondo scores. He's twentieth of the season and it's back on boys and girls. Crystal Palace two home two and yes, the situation I was trying to describe before is correct. If we go ahead in this game. Because our goal difference is better than Cardiff's and they are apparently losing, a win here, if other results stay as they currently are, does move us back into the playoff picture with seven games to go, which is nuts. If that cuts a Cardiff are losing to Reading, what are Watford doing? Watford are not there. Right, Harrison to right. Palace are pressing us a lot and it worries me when teams do that. Even though we do that to other teams quite regularly. But we just we need a little bit of extra time on the ball, as you saw there with Matondo. We just we can't handle the the high pace of teams doing to us what we do to them. And it's it seems baffling. But they've they've scored again. They're, how is Why is that making noises? What is going on? Um, I need to stop my phone from making noises, which I guess is me talking about something else. So hopefully that will then get us a goal while I'm sorting out silencing my phone. Um, Gregson now on the right hand side. Stop talking about the match, Kev. Harris plays it through to Moss. Moss out to Gregson again. It's so nonchalant from Moss. And yeah, nothing nothing else. Moss is having a good episode. He's looked very good today. But we need to we need goals, not just looking good. Harris plays Matondo in who can't quite get past his man Palliak and it falls to Harris and he's offside. How is he offside? That was deflect that went to him off a palace player. He must have been offside from the original pass, but I'm gonna to pretend to be the way football fans are, they get outraged even though they know deep down they're wrong. They get outraged anyway. I'm gonna be outraged about that. He was never offside. Gregson brings it down beautifully. Fernandez back to Harrison, who's got a little bit of space. Finds Matondo. Fernandez. The middle of this pitch is so crowded. Moss plays it out to Paliak, who has space because of the crowded middle. And Harris has his second of the game. Third of the game. Remember the outrage. 19th of the season. 20th of the season because of the whole outrage thing. And it's Crystal Palace 3, home 3, with 22 minutes left to play. And it's a proper end-to-end -end Kev game, isn't it? My word. Let's let's have a look what we can do personnel wise to try and grab we've got Paul Perry on the bench. He feels like a player who should be on the pitch rather than on the bench. So let's get him on for Fernandez. Harrison is tired, but he's having a cracking game. I'm gonna give him another ten minutes. Shane Phillips is sat there on the bench. I don't think I want to make any other changes. I just want to get Perry on for some more midfield energy. We're gonna show some passion and we're gonna keep an eye on Harrison because he's tired and on a yellow card. But he has played so well that I don't want to weaken the team. But equally, I don't want him to get... To look at that pass from Harrison. And Harris is in and he tried to be fancy. Now is not the time to try to be fancy, Anthony. Goodness me. Harrison's rating is getting higher and higher, but he's just shattered. We've got to take him off. Shane Phillips isn't going to provide us the same kind of play that Harrison does. But I... At some point, we have to stop pushing for the win and start trying to be sensible. And he is also supposed to protect our defence. And he can't do that if he can't get around. So Phillips is on to help with the whole defence protection thing. And we're trying to get creative. Is there a last goal in this game? I don't think there is. 3-3 three, three, away from home. Not a bad result. Cardiff have turned their result around, though. And they've now won their game. So what was the possibility of us being back in the playoff spots again? After all the ups and downs of this episode, we end it five points outside of the playoffs. So that was 
Yeah, you did well to come back, but I would have liked to win and I would have liked to cut Cardiff to lose. Seven games to go. The playoffs are still looking unlikely, but they're still mathematically possible. Therefore, we still keep playing this team in this system and crossing our fingers and hoping it works. So we're now going to be back tomorrow for the last two games of the regular season. Because we might have the we're not going to have the playoffs. The last two games of the season, Preston and Rotherham, and we'll see we'll see if we're still in a promotion push at that point. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.